I am not my genitalia. Recently I've been dealing with this issue uh, with different people and like, it's such a, a bloody game of ping pong, you know, when it comes to something like my genitalia. But I'm not my genitalia. None of us. Well, actually, I don't know if that's true. You tell me. I, one, I don't know if, if there's like a lot of hard fast differences between men and women. A lot of people would disagree with that, but a lot, a lot of the difference between men and, men and women is, is something we've created. You know, there's some hard fast facts. There is, there is some gray areas, and there's things that we've created, right? Um, you know, for example, I can be on a dating site. I can be on a dating site talking to guys, and and they'll come on and be like, "Hey, beautiful. Hey, gorgeous. I want to take you on a date. What's your favorite restaurant? Whatever. You know, I want to get to know you." Right? And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, let's exchange numbers. You know, you exchange numbers, and then they're in, they slip into your DMs, and then you're like, I should tell you, you know, I wasn't, I'm a girl who transitioned, right? And they're like, and they have one or two answers to that. Either, you know, like, how much? How much will it cost me to have sex with you? Um, when can we have sex, right? Because it's not like they're not attracted to us, you know, or that is utterly disgusting. You should have put that into your, your dating profile, right? And okay, put that in my dating profile. What do I get? How much to host? When can we have sex, right? Because they have one perception of me Right? They don't want to have a relationship with me. They just want they just want to satisfy a fetish of some sort. And this just kind of goes on and on and on and on and on. And it's not specific to dating sites. It's not specific to um, sexual orientation. I do with it with women. You know, there's like this, you know, it's like, well, everything about you is, is lovely, but except for that part. Genital preferences are real, right? Genital preferences are real. You know, I, I don't expect somebody, I don't expect a gay girl, right? Or a straight girl or any girl, you know, to like look at me and say, uh, and. To, to like have to accept me for whatever reason or a guy or whatever for whatever reason right we can reject anybody for any reason right I don't like you because you sound like Ozzy Osbourne I don't like you because you're this color or that color because your hair is long because your nose is too big because your nose is too short yada 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 whatever whatever reason we can reject somebody for whatever, and that is that is their right. You know, you're allowed to have a preference. I prefer to date pink people over purple people. That is your choice, right? Sometimes it's based on experience, you know, and sometimes when, you know, for example, gay women might say to me or something like that, uh, that's not my cup of tea, I don't wanna go there, right? that may be partly because of their history with I, I don't I don't equate men with penises. Men equate men with their penis. I don't equate men with their penis, but men equate people like me with, with a penis. Society equates maleness with with a penis. Right? And so if you've been raped by a dude, right? Having a girl with a sheenus is not, probably not going to be your cup of tea. It may be something that you can't look past, 
Gender preference is a real thing, right? Or some people, you know, they're just like, I don't like that type of genitalia. I prefer this type of genitalia. That, that is, that's completely valid as well, right? But the other side of that coin too is that I am not my genitalia. I don't think with my genitalia. My genitalia does not lead me around about and dictate how I think and what I do. Right? It doesn't dictate how I dress, doesn't dictate what I think, doesn't dictate what I say, doesn't dictate my actions, and so on and so on and so on. Right? It's really not a part of me. I hate it. It's all I'm working with, but I hate it. You know, I really wish it was not there. You know, but there's pros and cons to it, to leaving it or removing it. Right? Like functionality. And so it's really like it just it just sucks. It just really sucks. You know, it's it's really not any different than I don't see the difference between saying that I don't want to date you because you're white versus I don't want to date you because of your genitalia. I don't. That doesn't mean that anybody has to date me because I'm, you know, that, that means that people don't have to date me because they don't want to date me because I'm white or they don't want to date me because of my genitalia, whether whatever type of genitalia I have. You know, have you watched that movie Tangerine? There's this funny scene where this guy picks up this prostitute, this taxi driver picks up this prostitute in an area for uh, girls who've transitioned, you know? He has, he has a particular preference and he gets her in a car and they do the exchange of money and he's like, okay, let's see it because he wants to go south on her, right? And she's like this and he's like, what's that? And she's like, it's a vagina. And he's like, why are you in that area? That area is for, you know, these people. Why are you in that area? You tricked me. Get out. Give my money back. Get out of my car. It, it, it's just, it's a, re, a reverse form of discrimination. It, it's an aspect of comedy, but it's a reverse form of discrimination, right? And it kind of shows the stupidity of the situation, right? And another thing aspect too is it like, what a lot of people don't realize about something like me is that like, I think in a male-female dynamic, right? You know, what typically happens, and I'm not saying that this should happen or that this, this is what always happens, but how the way it typically goes with straight people, you know, and I know because I've been with straight guys, is that straight men dictate everything in bed. So we're going to do this sexual act, that sexual act, it's going to go like this, we're going to have supper this time. We're going to go to this movie. We're going to, I want you to wear these clothes. I want you to wear those clothes. Yada, 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 on and on, on, right? You know, and with me, it is not like, I mean, A, I'm not a dude. And B, you know, I don't even really want to use this. It's quite confusing to me. Right? Like it, it is it is a place where I draw pleasure, but it's also a place where I draw self loathing. You know, it like in bed it crosses my wires. outside of bed when you when you suffer rejection because of it it just it just it like really hurts but that doesn't mean that people aren't allowed to do that but one of the things too is it's like when you're the people don't people don't fathom because experience is everything so unless you've been in this position you know you don't particularly understand it Right, so if you take hormones, your body and your brain changes. Right, even when I went from doing uh, spironolactone with estradiol 
you know, and then throwing in progesterone into the situation changed everything. Changed everything for the better, but changed everything. Again. I don't know, and I, you know, and I don't even know that, like, even if I decided to detransition, that that would be a possibility. Like, one, I would have to get a mastectomy. You know, I, I don't know that it would change my brain. Because my brain has very much changed. I don't know that it would change my organs. I guess it would, to some degree. But I don't know if we do it in, in the absolute sense. And I don't know anybody who's detransitioned and gone back on testosterone. I don't know. But I can't I can't imagine going backwards. And I, I don't know any girls who transition that go backwards. I've never met a single person. I've met people who've not gone forwards out of fear. I was one of those people at one point, but I've never gone backwards. I don't know, I've known some girls who transitioned who have had bottom surgery and there's a level of functionality. Um, and so that's relatively encouraging to me. And there was also numerous problems that came along with it, you know, for prime example in Canada is that you have to fly from wherever it is you are to Montreal to have the surgery and then days later you're back on a plane I think a day or week later you're back on a plane and you're heading back somewhere else you're not even fully recovered you're swollen you know you're dealing with bariatric pressure of the plane and whatnot it's just you know and, and what would you prefer like uh three hour flight or a three day bus ride. I'm not sure if either, which which of those would be better for in relation to having just had a vaginal plasty. And then if you get an infection or something, you know, then you have to get funding or if you don't heal properly or you need a revision, you have to get funding to get back on a plane, to fly back there, to, to do a revision, and then get back on a plane and fly back to wherever it is you are in this giant country. I don't know. It like like I I completely get the like genital genital preferences is is a preference. I'm not denying that. You know I comprehend that. And conversely, it's like if I started pushing back and discriminating against against a lot of people who who don't accept me in that regard because of my genitalia. You know it would be like. Like for example, I end up meeting a lot of people who have addictions. This has been kind of a norm for me. I meet a lot of people who have addictions. And uh, and a lot of these people who have addictions don't want to get caught with someone like me because it's just further, it just brings down further hatred upon their head. It just brings down more suffering. It, you know, they could get caught up in stigma, right? You know, it's like, coming out of the closet whilst in the midst of having uh, a drug addiction. Do you think things are going to get better? Maybe? I would say yes. But I think a lot of people deal with like different addictions because they're dealing with different issues in life. But it's hard, like, but if, like, imagine if I just started saying to people, like, well, your mental health is not of your met, your poor state, your poor state of mental health is not my preference. Your issues with drugs is not my preference. 
Your age is not my preference. You are too young for me. You are too old for me. You know, you're, I do not date girls like me. That is my preference. I date cis women or I date cis men. I do not date other trans people. You know, even though I, I'm attracted to women, even though I'm attracted to you, you know, I don't want to date you. Or you get like amongst trans girls who date trans girls, it's like, I don't want to date a girl with a vagina. I want to date a girl with this or that. How is that any different than, than when, you know, guys say, I don't want to date a girl with a butt with a vagina. We all hate those guys, you know, who don't want to date us because we, we've had bottom surgery, yet we don't seem to have an issue with another one of us who won't date us because we have had the butt, the surgery. Like there's been so many, so many moments and points in time where it's like I could just look, turn around to the other person and say, bitch, you ain't good enough for me. You ain't good enough for me. No, but I got this thing here to keep me humble. 